there all my crafty friends welcome to my channel in this video I'll be doing a mixed-media Halloween craft project using decoupage and air dry clay it's going to be a lot of fun there will be step-by-step follow-along instructions I'll be making all kinds of little witchy embellishments I'd love to have you join me so if you're ready let's make a mess I let my Cricut machine print and cut this picture of a moon. I'm using distress ink around the edges to give the moon some depth. I am inking the dauber and going around the moon in a circular motion. If you don't have a Cricut machine, you can just print something from the internet. There's tons of pictures out there. Now I'm going to get my canvas ready. I'm using a black canvas since this is a night scene. I'm watering down some paint so I can get a real smeary look on the canvas so it'll look like a highlighted night sky behind the moon. I'm using light yellow, lavender, and a dark purple. First I put some black gesso on the entire canvas to give me a nice base. And I'm going to add the other colors on there while the gesso is still wet. I test fit where my moon is going so I can highlight the sky around it. I'm painting the purple around the moon area and then adding the yellow. Let me know in the comments where you're watching from. I'd love to hear from you. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. I cut a piece of paper the exact size as the moon I'm going to use and laid it on the canvas so I could get the highlights perfect. I added extra yellow paint where the moon is going to block out some of that black background. And actually, in hindsight, I probably should have done that with white. It would have been better. And then more of the purple to blend things in a little. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. By doing so, you help my channel to grow and reach more people out there. That way I can continue to bring all of you great tutorials. And thank you for doing that. I'm making some spooky embellishments now with Sculpey Oven Baked Clay. I'm adding the clay to the molds and then I'll bake it at 275 for 15 minutes per quarter inch as their instructions on the package. The witch is big so I gave her an extra 10 minutes. I tried to make her with air dry clay but there are so many little facets to her and they kept breaking off when I tried to unmold her. So I decided that oven baked clay was going to be the way to go for this project. I made some little bats, ghosts, and a frog because every witch has a frog and I made a witch's cauldron for making potions. Everything is ready to go into the oven now. I'm going to bake them right in the molds. Everything is cooked and cooled now so I'm removing them from the molds. I'm painting the little frog green and I'm adding some metallic rubs to the witch's cauldron to make it look like a metal pot. If you don't have any rubs, you can just dry brush it with some metallic paint instead. I gave the witch a coat of black paint, even though I didn't really need to, just to even out the color and make her look nice. I used an antiquing medium on the frog to make all the details show up. I just brushed it on and then wiped it off right away. Now I'm adding some satin varnish to all my spooky little creatures.
Once the varnish dries, I'll add some rubs to them as well, just to highlight them a little bit. And if you don't have rubs, you can dry brush some metallic paint again. I bought this cute little napkin from decoupagenapkins.com. They have a great selection of all types of napkins and rice paper. I'll leave a link for you. I'm going to be using two of the pictures from the napkin, but I'm only going to be working with the one of them right now. I'm cutting out the one section and separating the other two layers from the picture because I'm only going to use the layer that actually has the picture on it. I'm removing some of the background from the picture with a water brush. If you don't have one, you can just use water and a paintbrush and that'll work just fine. This method leaves a feathered edge instead of a sharp cut edge. I turn the napkin upside down on a piece of plastic and I just cut up a Ziploc bag to do that. And now I'm spraying it with water, quite a bit of water, and very carefully moving the napkin around to remove any air bubbles and wrinkles. I actually have an in-depth tutorial on decoupaging with the water method. Click the pop-up above and you can see that video, and I'll also leave a link in my description box. I added some Mod Podge and turned the napkin over to place it on the canvas. I'm using this first decoupage picture as a guide. The black canvas will show through it, but that's okay. We're gonna fix it later. I'm smoothing the napkin very carefully through the plastic, then I'll remove it. There will be very few wrinkles, just a couple of very, very tiny ones that will go away as the napkin dries. And now I'll decoupage the moon with some more Mod Podge and let everything dry. This is for you, Gizmo. I hope you're watching. I'm going to dye some cheesecloth black. I'm using RIT dye and I followed the instructions on the package, but I just did it in a bowl instead of my washing machine because it's such a small piece. And then I rinsed it out and let it dry overnight. And it turned out great. I cut it into strips and pulled on all the edges to make it look really ragged. Now I'm going to glue it to the edges of the canvas with some Mod Podge. I swear, Mod Podge is just the miracle liquid, isn't it? I use it for almost everything. Send me a comment telling me about some of the unusual ways you use Mod Podge. I'd love to hear about it. While the Mod Podge is still wet, I'm sprinkling some black glitter on the cheesecloth. You can see that the first decoupage is very dark with the black paint coming through, but that's okay, I'm going to fix it right now. A black background while decoupaging can be really challenging, but we're not going to let it win. I'm using the first picture as a guide, and I'm painting white right on top of the pumpkins and the lettering, and this will serve as a base for the next layer of decoupage. The paint is dry, and it's time to add my second layer of decoupage. I'm doing all the same steps, except I'm separating the letters one by one from the pumpkins. I'm going to add those to the canvas separately so I can line them up with the white paint. And I'll do the same water method as with the first layer. I have some great videos coming up. More fall and Halloween and some Christmas. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them. And click the bell if you want to be notified anytime I upload a new video. If you want to see tutorials on all types of crafts, you are in the right place. Be sure to check out some of my playlists for inspiration on a new project.
And now it looks beautiful. No black is showing through. And after it dried, I added one more coat of Mod Podge to seal it. Oops, there are a couple of tiny little spots where the lettering didn't line up quite right with the white paint. But because of the white paint, I can see exactly where they are and I touched them up with a little bit of some matching green paint. The Witch's Cauldron absolutely needed some steam rising from it, don't you think? So I'm using some gray paint and I'm watering it down a little bit so it makes a blurry line. I'm touching up where the napkin meets the canvas with some black paint so it blends nicely. And once that's dried, I gave the entire canvas a coat of satin varnish. And this is the best part. I love when it's time to put it all together. I have a black glittery tree. I cut up the branches so I could place them on the canvas individually. I'm adding the witch's cauldron and the frog. I put some bats in the tree branches and then added some ghosts and a few more bats flying over the moon. I'm using a Shore Bonder cordless hot glue gun. It is so nice to work without a cord in your way. The link for this is in my favorite tools section in the description box. And now it's time to add the star of this little show, the witch. Instead of hot glue though, I'm using a clear gloss gel medium to attach her to the canvas. And then I'll let this dry overnight. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist.